Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life. The Kapuna Caregivers Program is vital to those options and choices we make, not just for our loved ones, but for ourselves. So together we can explore the various paths to life ending. Together we can make those difficult conversations easier and together we can make sure that our own wishes and those of our loved ones are expressed and respected. So if you're ready to join us, we ask, navigate the journey. Today we're going to venture into Kapuna Care with Hawaii State Representative Greg Takayama, who serves Pearl City, Waimalu, Pacific Palisades community, where he has lived for several generations, <laughs> decades, de decades, with his wife, Linda Chu Takayama, their three daughters. Representative Takayama has served as press secretary to Senator Inouye in DC, as communications director for Ben Cayetano. Takayama is the spokesperson, or was the spokesperson mm -hmm. for UH Manoa for six, ten, I don't know. Twelve years. Six years. Mm -hmm. And now, now, as a co-convener of the Hawaii State Legislature Kapuna Caucus, he is a spokesperson for those of us who are Kapuna. So welcome, Greg. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Marsha. I'm delighted to guest. be here. That's a very generous introduction. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, thank you. as a Kapuna, uh -huh. I am excited and delighted about the program. Uh, what was it, just a couple of weeks ago? Yes. The governor signed the bill into law. So, tell us, tell us what the Kapuna Care bill is about, right. what it does for those of us that are Kapuna. Mm -hmm. Well, the Kapuna Caregivers Program bill, uh, which as you said, Governor Ige signed into law, was passed by the legislature without a single vote against it, Wonderful. which is very unusual um, in this time when we're set establishing a new program and providing funds for the startup. Um, it's not controversial, I don't think, because so many of us are kupuna. I mean, I'm 64, so by most uh, definitions, I am kupuna. But in just 10 to 15 years, a fully one-third of our state will be over the age of 65. For anybody that doesn't know, mm -hmm. And since we're on YouTube and sure. people around the world get to see, what is a kupuna? A that kupuna may be a word sure. that they don't know. It's from the Hawaiian language, but it generally means an elder, a senior, a senior citizen. Um, but going back to the, the act that was signed into yeah. law, what it does is it sets up a program to help uh, family caregivers, um, remain family caregivers, and also remain in full-time jobs if they have one. Uh, what we do know from our studies is that the average family caregiver is a woman in, uh, in about her late 40s or 50s and uh, has a full-time job, is a professional. But because family caregiving devotes, um, requires such a large amount of time and devotion, uh, oftentimes they have to leave their jobs to provide full-time care. What the bill does is provide a stipend of about $70 a day so that the family caregivers can find at least a, a little bit of respite uh, period for themselves. This would enable uh, them to provide um, perhaps adult daycare for their uh, uh, person that they're caregiving for, uh, for one day, per, per, uh, provide emergency transportation, for example, to a, a family a doctor or medical appointment. In other words, um, just provide a little bit of respite for this caregiver, uh, maybe one day a week. Now, it provides $600,000 to start up the program. Um, there are some startup costs involved. The governor's office on El um, elderly affairs will uh, be establishing the policies for it. And eventually, next year and the years beyond, we hope to increase the amount that is actually devoted to this program. $600,000 will not go far. Uh, we're hoping to increase it to maybe $6 million a year. But even then, I think the need far exceeds the availability of resources. So 
We hope to reach as many family caregivers as we can. It's not an entitlement. It'll be limited by the, by the amount of money that the legislature provides every year. So if um, you have a job mm -hmm. and your spouse becomes disabled, mm -hmm. does that mean that you still work, but you can take a day or two off yes. and care for their needs? Is, is that what I'm, what, where we're going with That's this? That's the idea, yeah. That it provides a small stipend um, and particularly aimed at those who need the support to be able to take off um, from maybe one day of work, one day of work a week. And uh, as I said, enroll the, the um, caregiving recipient, the loved one, in an adult daycare program or some other activity um, to enable you, the caregiver, to take off from work one day a week. It's the first of its kind in the country. It's untested, obviously. And so Hawaii's being a, a pioneer in terms of providing for the needs of a community, that is huge. It's a nationwide uh, phenomenon uh, in which we see uh, family members providing care for their loved ones. Uh, <coughs> now, what here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. where the everybody's is a kupuna, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'll you I'll have yeah. so many generations together because people are living so much longer. Yes. So. Where is there a cutoff? What? How do you? Uh, I guess. How do you get started with this? Mm -hmm. Who is eligible for mm -hmm. this? And um, especially with several generations in yeah. the house. Well, so the first step is to have the governor's office on aging set up policies, uh, and first would be eligibility. Yes. Uh, we want to get those in need, obviously, and so the, there will be some eligibility limits in terms of income. Um, for those who are receiving care. And so, as I said before, it's not an entitlement. So not everyone who is a family caregiver and is working full-time will be able to receive this. Um, we hope to meet, reach as many of those as we possibly can. But um, we won't reach all of those who want the stipend. Of course. We probably won't even reach all of those who need the stipend. What about people, like you said, well, you said full-time, but somebody that's working part-time, mm -hmm, does that, mm -hmm. do they qualify? Well, the aim is really to, at least as we start the program, to help those who have full-time jobs. But there are some people that have taken full, half part-time, so oh, yeah. they can be caregivers. Yes. What about them? This won't solve the whole problem. That won't. This won't alleviate the whole problem. And what, you know, one of the proposals that the Kupuna Caucus has supported for years now is the idea of paid family leave. And that, in a way, is what this um, Kupuna Caregiver Program supports. But the real hope of the Kupuna Caucus and many others in the community is to enact uh, perhaps, um, perhaps as soon as next year, some kind of paid family leave program. States like New York have enacted it um, in recent years. And so Hawaii needs to do that eventually, I think. A fa paid family leave mm -hmm. um, would cover what? Who who is <coughs> who is eligible for family? Is that male and female, not yeah. just no. not just the mother or whatever? Yeah. Well, the kind of program that um, is supported by the bill that Kupuna uh, Caucus supports, uh, for example, proposes that everyone who has a full-time job would pay into um, a fund. A, a, a family leave fund, um, perhaps $10 a month, $15 a month. And so this fund will accumulate um, a, a, a little bit like our current um, worker comp uh, mm. fund. So it doesn't require an input of uh, taxpayer funds. It'll be a payroll deduction. Mm -hmm. And so after you're vested in the program, after say 10 years, um, then you could tap into the program to get maybe 60% of your, um, of your uh, pay uh, during a time when your loved one, your spouse or parent or um, um, sibling or, or a child uh, requires care. Well, what about now when younger people uh, who have 
new baby. Mm -hmm. And would that be family leave also? I would think so, if, if they are uh, vested in the program, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And so not just the mother, but the father also. And in some cases where we have uh, people uh, in uh, marriages mm -hmm. where they adopt a child. Well, the those would yeah. are those people covered also? Well, right now, um, that would have to be defined by whatever bill we, we uh, take up. I am not sure about um, adopted children. I would admit, admission that it would be the goal to include them as well. Well, I meant well, if you yeah. adopt a new baby, sure. obviously you uh -huh. need to be oh, yeah. just like a uh -huh. newborn. Sure. You, it needs the care. You need to learn how to take care of the baby mm -hmm. and all of those things. So I'm asking if that would be covered in I would hope family. So. We just don't but want to again, leave out anybody now. No, again, um, the, the, the real task is defining um, paid family leave um, in terms of the legislation. Now, some form of the legislation has passed the House in previous years. It hasn't passed the Senate. Um, so the real activity is to try and get something enacted. I <coughs> now, family leave or long-term care, all mm -hmm. of these, I think that what happens with the Chamber of Commerce says, well, we can't afford it. Mm -hmm. And they always say that no matter what kind of bill mm -hmm. you want to pass, the Chamber of Commerce shows up and says, we can't afford it. I think in, do we look at the long-term effect, that we cannot not afford it? Is that a crazy No, sentence? I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. The imp go ahead. The, the important thing of what people contribute to society and in the long run, how can we not do this? No, I, you're absolutely right. You know, and the whole idea of family caregivers, um, it's not a special interest. We're, we're all affected. You know, if you think about it, if you're not a family caregiver right this moment, you perhaps were one, mm -hmm. or you will be one, or you'll receive caregiving from mm -hmm. a family member. So family caregiving affects virtually all of us at some time or another. Um, there are right now about 150,000 family caregivers uh, in the state of Hawaii. There are 8 million throughout the country. And so, as, as I said, it's, it's a nationwide um, phenomenon. But in particularly here in Hawaii, we are taking steps to address um, the issue of family caregiving. Just this year, uh, a law went into effect, which we actually passed last session. It's called the CARE Act. And what it do does is say that if you um, are a family caregiver to someone who's been hospitalized, when that person is discharged from the hospital um, and uh, you are that person's family caregiver, before the hospital discharges uh, the patient, the hospital will provide you, if you want, instructions on how to care for this person when um, uh, they're discharged to go home. In other words, when you should provide medication, when you should perhaps turn them over in bed if, if they're um, bedridden, um, and all the sort of basic things that many caregivers don't know um, about. And the hospitals have not been required to provide that until now. Why would they object to that? The concerns in previous years were that... Um, I mean, why would the hospital object they, to... You know, the concerns are liability, ah. that they would be held liable in case the family caregiver made a mistake in terms of caregiving. So we wrote into the law um, um, the fact that the um, uh, family caregivers would not be liable, or the hospitals hospital would not be liable, liable for the care provided by family caregivers. I know... Um, I was going through life just having a good time, mm -hmm. and then one day my mother fell, and the next day I'm a caregiver oh, yeah. with mm -hmm. no idea, none of what to do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that would have been a great service to me mm -hmm. if I had had that kind of instruction, because I had no idea. Oh yeah, no, and we, we, hear, we heard many stories from caregivers like yourself um, as to the inadequacy of the preparation before the hospital discharges their loved one to go home, which is why we enacted the law. Um, many times injections are involved, 
and and you know there has to be some kind of preparation for that to the caregiver sometimes the caregiver will will discover especially in the ter in terms of an elderly spouse that he or she just cannot take care of this loved one and maybe will require hiring a nursing service and but at least you'd know that before the loved one comes home mm -hmm. well we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to ask you about all of the other things that the legislature does. Be happy to. I love it. Thank you. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii Fridays at 3 p.m. Hawaiian Standard Time. We explore environmental issues, political issues, keeping it local any way we can. Aloha. Hi, we're back. <laughs> and my guest today is Representative Greg Takayama, and the Hawaii State Legislature has been his home for what? How many terms? I'm in my fifth year, so I'm just starting my third term. Third term. Mm -hmm. And how do you like it? I enjoy it. I, I enjoy it a huge amount. Um, and I didn't quite know what to expect. I've covered the legislature as a reporter, um, so but it's different being on the inside and a totally fulfilling experience, at least so far. Well. I remember, I hope I get this right, mm -hmm. that you, mm -hmm. unlike so many of our legislators, walk your district regularly. Is that, did sure. I get that right? I absolutely try to as many times as I can. Great. Yeah. So, the story goes that Representative Takayama met an elderly lady in his neighborhood with an albizi tree. Mm -hmm. Anybody that doesn't know, tell us what an albizi tree is and why this particular thing presents a problem. An albizi tree is an invasive species that grows rapidly. It's originally from Australia, but unlike the macadamia nut tree, which is a benevolent tree, uh, the um, albizi tree is a hazardous one because it can grow out of control. It grows 10 to 12 feet a year. Wow. And so it, it, it virtually looking at it, it, it grows. Um, and so the situation you talked about was actually in Pacific Palisades where the neighbor of this elderly woman um, came up to me and said, uh, Representative Takayama, look at this tree that's hanging over my house. And it's an, it was an albizia tree. It was a huge albizia tree. Um, and it was dropping branches. The thing about albizia trees is that because it grows so fast, the branches are virtually hollow. And so they're subject to falling off um, in high winds or uh, hurricanes. And so they present a hazard to roofs and the, the lives of um, the people who are under it. And so this tree had spread and of course was overhanging um, this person's house and as well as their neighbors. And so, um, as you said, the owner of this um, uh, house on which the, um, the Albizia tree was growing was an elderly woman and many neighbors, all the neighbors have asked her to trim the tree, but she said, it's, it's huge and I can't afford it. Because as it turns out, at the cost of uh, trimming such a tree would be in um, the thousands of dollars. And so what happened was we, legislature passed a law, uh, a hazardous tree. So that's your bill? My bill, yes. Yes, okay. A hazardous tree bill, which provided a million dollars to start out with um, to state civil defense and what it does is enable the state to pay for removing trees that are on private property um, when that property owner is unable to do so themselves. What the so this is civil defense? 
civil defense because it's a, a hazard. It's a hazardous, and they had deal with hazardous um, substances and, and um, things like rocks and everything else. So they deal with trees now. And so what happened is that in this case, uh, civil defense came out and they um, had actually conducted a survey of hazardous trees like this. And this was considered one of the most hazardous in the state. And uh, that, in other words, posed a danger um, to those who were under it. And so they hired a contractor to come out and, and remove the tree. As it turned out, the tree was about 130 feet tall, one of the wow. tallest Albizia trees the, these contractors had ever seen in Hawaii. And there are about eight houses that are under it, including the, the owner of the lot uh, herself, that would have been uh, affected if this tree had fallen down. So now it's a stump. And um, there are still funds. There are uh, still about half a million dollars remaining in that fund to remove hazardous trees when the owner of the tree or the property um, cannot afford to do so. In many cases, these are elderly people. But in cases where the owner does have the means, then the civil defense goes out and um, persuades them that um, if they don't remove the tree, then they'll remove it and, and build the property owner. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, does that include all of those people on the big island that had it after the hurricane? It can. There have been uh, big island uh, Albizia trees that have removed. As I said, it applies to private property um, that uh, on which the, the tree that's growing presents a hazard to neighboring private property owners. What do you do to keep it from growing back if it can grow so easily? Oh, you have to kill it. You have to kill it. There are insectic uh, not there are not insecticides, but planticides that will will kill the the tree. Um, just requires a couple drops, but uh, it has to be done carefully because, of course, when it dies, the branches still fall. So, done in the right way. Um, and by the right person, you know, it, it, they can be removed. So what other bills are there that are pending now that we're looking at a new session? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, now that we um, have enacted the Kupuna Caregivers Bill, and I said $600,000 was appropriated in its first year, so when we come back in January, we'll be seeking more funds to, to implement the law. We we're hoping for $6 million. Maybe that's um, unrealistic amount to try and get, but we'll try and get as much as we can to reach as many caregivers as we can. So follow-up is, is truly important. Uh, if I might mention, if I could, um, another bill that was signed into law the same day as the caregivers bill was um, a bill that uh, provides funds, half a million dollars, for seniors to remain healthy. It's, it funds uh, exercise and recreation classes and um, nutrition classes for the elderly and uh, at the city level, the city, the counties uh, fund such programs at the YMCA's, at county playgrounds, at community centers. And what had happened is that it had run out of money. So for the first time in two years, uh, $500,000 was provided to fund um, these healthy aging programs. And what, the reason it's so important is because, um, as you said, our elderly live longer than any place else in, in the really? country. We have the longest uh, longevity um, uh, of any state. And in fact, one of the highest in the world. In the world. Uh, our average wow. lifespan is 82 years. For um, women, it's uh, as much as 88 years. Uh, women tend to live longer than men. My husband's already 86, so he's, mm -hmm. he's exceeded it. Right? Yeah, and <laughs> my wife reminds me of, of that as well. <laughs> but anyway, um, so a healthy aging is important, yeah. uh, both mentally and physically, because um, as we age, um, we become susceptible to, as your mom did, uh, falls. Serious falls are one of the leading causes of death mm -hmm. among the elderly. Oftentimes, people who suffer a serious fall never walk again and uh, oftentimes can die. Yeah, well, that's what happens. You mm -hmm. never walked again. Absolutely. Yeah. And so remaining healthy, um, remaining uh, through exercise, through nutrition, is, is very important to remaining um, independent. Most people want to live independently, um, age in place, uh, in their homes, not in nursing homes. Right. And so that's what programs like these 
caregiver programs are intended to do. So now we're, I have to ask you, mm -hmm. as our audience knows, we have been supporting medical aid in dying. Mm. What are the chances this year? This coming year? This coming year. The, the bill was deferred, mm -hmm. so it still has life. Mm -hmm. So what are the chances? What it, where do you see this? I, I'm not asking yeah. you. No. Uh, I just want to know what your feeling is about the chances of it having some life. I'd say there it's maybe a 50-50 proposition. You know, it is controversial um, because I think not so much... I personally, you know, support the idea of providing um, uh, a f someone who is um, fatally ill uh, with the means and capacity to um, end his or own own life. Um, the problem was that because physicians were an integral part of implementing such a law, um, and physicians themselves expressed um, a need for more study, for more preparation, for them to be able to handle this awesome responsibility. Um, that was one of the major reasons mm -hmm. that it was deferred by the um, health committee in the house. And I, I, I was totally supportive of the, of the need to defer it pending further study uh, by our physician community uh, as well as nursing community. And so I think that um, as that is going on, uh, the legislature, uh, particularly the health side, will be prepared to you know, continue those discussions next session. And I hope we will. Uh, we'll have a new health committee chairman, not sure who it will be in the house. Uh, because Representative Bellotti has um, become the vice speaker of the House, so she's left the Health Committee. So if you are in um, in leadership, you, you're you not a chair of a committee? No, not in the House, no. No. So uh, Dee Morikawa, she's Dee Morik in leadership, so she, she wouldn't be a yes, chair so of that's right. her committee? That's right. Uh, Representative Morikawa uh, was chair of the Health Human Services Service, Committee. Yes and now she has become a majority floor leader so she's no longer she no longer will be chair yeah, of that right. committee uh, not sure who the chair of that committee will be as well mm -hmm. now, I'm just trying to put all the pieces together mm -hmm. now we have one minute left real quick this uh, special session yes about the rail yes what's gonna happen real quick we will pass a bill to fund rail I hope we do um, how we fund rail is the real question, and I don't have the answer to that, uh, whether it's in the form of simply continuing the GET surcharge or implementing some kind of hotel room tax as well. Not sure, but I do see the need for rail. It'll help everyone in our community. Well, I can thank you so much. It's thank been a you. pleasure. You will come back I will. as we move through the session, as new bills show up, and we'll see what's mm -hmm. going on. Thank you so much, Greg. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Marcia. I appreciate it. Hello. Bye.